we will study about the fugacity, fugacity coefficient, activity and the activity coefficient. And we have taken this topic firstly because this is requested topic and the another topics we will study later. So firstly we see what is the fugacity. Fugacity is nothing, it is a very simple term. Actually it is the effective pressure or we can say it is adjusted pressure and this is used in the case of the real gases. The concept of fugacity was given by the scientist Gilbert and Lewis and it is given as a substitute for the pressure in the real gases. Because in the case of ideal gases, the pressure is same as given in the ideal gas equation. But in the case of real gases, there are several forces of attraction and repulsion. So the pressure is not as it is. It is somewhat less or more. So instead of this, we use the term fugacity. That is effective pressure. So firstly, we start with the Gibbs free energy. As we know that the differential form of the Gibbs free energy is given by dz is equal to Vdb minus Sdt. And if we want to see the variation of Gibbs free energy with the pressure, we will take the process as the isothermal process. It means when the temperature remains constant. In this case, this term will become zero because temperature is constant. So we get the equation like this after integrating it between the two pressures that is final pressure and the initial pressure and this equation will take the following form we can also write it like this that is Gibbs free energy at the final pressure is equal to Gibbs free energy at the initial pressure plus integration between the limits final pressure and initial pressure VDP if we take the molar quantities then this equation will be written as GM, it means molar Gibbs free energy at the pressure F, final pressure is equal to molar Gibbs free energy at the initial pressure plus integration between limits of PF to PI molar volume dP. Or we can also write it like that the GM at the partial pre at the pressure F is equal to GM at the initial pressure plus RT, natural log of PF upon Pi. Now, if we want to substitute, we can substitute this initial pressure by the standard pressure. That is 1 bar pressure and we can denote it by P0. So, if the Pi is equal to P0, then the free energy G of a perfect gas at the pressure P is related to the standard free energy that is G0 by this equation that is gm at the pressure p is equal to gm zero that is standard free energy plus rt natural log of p upon p zero and we know that for the ideal gas the gas equation is like this pv is equal to nrt but for the real gases this equation becomes somewhat complicated this is somewhat changed and it becomes somewhat like p plus a Vm minus B is equal to NRT because there are several other things that are the different types of forces are acting between the molecules. So the pressure cannot be written as like this and this becomes like this and when we will put these values this equation becomes very much complicated. So the Lewis, the scientist Lewis replaced this term by the another term, simple term that is fugacity. So in the case of real gases, the pressure is replaced by the effective pressure that is called fugacity and it is denoted by F. So the equation becomes like Gm is equal to Gm0 plus Rt natural log of F upon P0 where F is the fugacity. Fugacity has the dimensions of pressure and if we compare the two equations above we can find that the fugacity is directly proportional to pressure and we can put up a value here that is phi and the equation becomes like this f is equal to phi p and we can also write that the phi is equal to f upon p where phi is known as the fugacity coefficient and it depends on the temperature, pressure and the identity of the gas. For ideal gases, 
phi is equal to 1. So, the value of fugacity will be equal to pressure. It means the fugacity, the effective pressure is equal to the real pressure, the natural pressure. But for the real gases, the phi's value, the fugacity coefficient is always less than the 1. And one thing should be noted that the fugacity is not a physical property of the substance. It is a calculated property and it is intrinsically related to the chemical potential. For a mixture of the real gases, the chemical potential of the ith constituent, it means in the case of mixture, there are several gases. And if we want to find out the chemical potential of any of these gases, it means it may be ith gas. So we can say the chemical potential of the ith constituent is given by this equation. That is mu i is equal to mu i0 plus rt natural log of fi, where mu i0 is the standard chemical potential of that specific constituent. And Fi is the fugacity of this constituent, that ith constituent. So we can say that when the system approaches the ideal gas condition, it means when it is at high temperature and very low pressure, these conditions are called ideal gas condition. In such a condition, the chemical potential tends to be negative and then this is the condition when the fugacity coefficient tends to be unity. It means the in such conditions the gas will approaches the ideal gas state that is the fugacity is the pressure both are the same condition. So the fugacity directly relates the tendency of system to prefer one phase over the another. For example at a fixed temperature the water has the three different phases and it will have three different fugacity for these three phases and which phase is favorable depends upon the these value of fugacities the lowest fugacity state will be favorable it means the state the phase which has the lowest fugacity will be the favorable so by the fugacity we can easily know this thing now we see the another term that is the activity and the activity coefficient activity is similar to fugacity Similarly, as fugacity is used in the case of gases to replace the pressure, similarly, activity is used to replace the concentration term in the case of non-ideal solutions. So, we can say activity term is used to replace the concentration term in the non-ideal solutions. As we know, for the ideal solutions, the equation is the chemical potential of the ith constituent is given by mu i is equal to mu i 0 plus rt natural log of pi upon p0 where mu i 0 is the standard chemical potential of the ith constituent pi is the partial pressure of the ith constituent and p0 is the standard standard pressure so we also know according to the raoult's law that the pi upon p0 is the mole fraction so we can say that mu i is equal to mu i 0 plus rt natural log of xi where xi is the mole fraction of the ith constituent. But we know this equation is for the ideal solutions but in the case of non-ideal solutions they deviates from the Raoult's law. So this xi term is replaced by the another term that is ai. So the equation becomes mu i is equal to mu i 0 plus rt natural log of ai where ai is called the activity coefficient of the ith constituent. By comparing the two equations we can get that this activity is directly proportional to the mole fraction or the concentration term. So we can write that ai is equal to gamma xi where gamma is a constant that is called the activity coefficient. And by putting the value of xi, we will get ai is equal to gamma pi upon p0. So from this equation, we can get that gamma is equal to ai upon xi. And this activity coefficient for the ideal gases, its value is equal to 1. So the ai will be equal to activity will be equal to concentration. 
सो ग्रेटर द डेविएशन ऑफ द गामा और द एक्टिविटी कॉफिशियंट फ्रॉम द वन देन मोर विल बी द नॉन आइडियल सोल्यूशन सो सोल्यूशन विल बी नॉन आइडियल एंड फॉर द आइडियल सोल्यूशन इट्स वैल्यू विल बी वन सो एक्टिविटी विल बी इक्वल टू द कंसंट्रेशन सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द फ्यूगेसिटी एंड द एक्टिविटी मीट्स यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो थैंक यू